Hi everyone, welcome back to Connected Rheumatology. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz. So glad that you're here with us today. Today we're gonna to be talking about rheumatoid arthritis treatment. It is a topic I know can cause a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of confusion. And I'm hoping just to provide some clarity, answer some questions, get some questions brought up that you can then talk about with your doctor. Now, there's a lot of information in this video, so I'm thinking I'm probably going to need to split it up into two videos, so we'll see how it goes. But if you like this kind of stuff, here at Connected Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because it is all connected. And if that sounds like something you wanna hear more about, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, share this with anyone you think can benefit from this information that really helps us get in front of more eyeballs. Our goal here is to answer questions and help come up with more questions so that you can have some productive and effective conversations with your own doctor. So let's get into rheumatoid arthritis treatment. All right. So rheumatoid arthritis treatment is a huge topic. It is a topic that literally takes two years for us to teach our rheumatologists in training. But I'm going to really try to simplify it and explain the way we look at it as rheumatologists and the way we think about treatment so that then you know why you're given certain medications, why certain medications are changed, what are these medications, what's the thought process behind these medications, just to lay down the groundwork. Of course, every individual situation is different. Why a certain medication is chosen for one person and another medication is chosen for another person is something that is between you and your doctor, and I certainly don't get into all the different, there's a million different reasons, a million different permutations that can happen in the clinic room between you and your doctor. So what I hope to do here is just provide a general view of rheumatoid arthritis treatment. Okay, so let's get into it. So I like to think of the treatment in divided into two big categories. So we have the anti-inflammatories, and these are the medications that help you feel better here and now. They cut down the inflammation so that your joints aren't so inflamed, you don't have as much pain, you're able to get out of bed, you're able to do the things in your life that you need to do. And these are medications that are not specific for rheumatoid arthritis. They're anti-inflammatory. So they bring down inflammation regardless of what's causing the inflammation. The other category of medications we have, you can call anti-RA medicine, or the doctors will call them disease-modifying medications. These are medications that are actually, they actually modify the course of rheumatoid arthritis. So they don't just bring down inflammation, but they're actually modifying the immune system so that the RA is not as active. And both categories of medication are actually very useful and very necessary in a long-term treatment strategy for RA. All right, so starting with the anti-inflammatories, what are they? Well, these are medications that are anti-inflammatory. So there's one broad class called the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, and these are going to be your ibuprofens, your naprosins, your diclofenacs. There's a whole slew of medications that fall under this category. And many of them are over the counter, and you can also get prescription strength for some of these medications. Now, again, these medications are used obviously for all kinds of inflammation. You have a headache, you take an Advil, you, you know, have a tendonitis, you take a, an Aleve. These are general anti-inflammatory medications, but they are very useful when you have rheumatoid arthritis. The other anti-inflammatory medication that we use is prednisone. And prednisone is a type of corticosteroid, or oftentimes you'll hear us just say steroid. And 
You know, there are lots of different types of flavors of corticosteroids, and they differ as far as how quickly they act, what tissues in the body they're absorbed, um, how you give them, whether it's a pill or whether it's through the IV. But in general, the most commonly prescribed corticosteroid for most autoimmune conditions, but especially RA, is going to be prednisone. So those are, in general, the medications that fall under this anti-inflammatory category. Now, as I said, these are medications that decrease inflammation, so an RA patient will generally feel better when taking these medications. So why can't we just take these medicines long term to control our RA? Well, there's a number of reasons. First of all, side effects. Now, there is no medication that has zero side effects. Every medication for any condition out there has a list of the effects that we want and the pro possible, possible list of effects that we don't want and anti-inflammatories are no exception. So when we're talking about medications like ibuprofen and naproxen and those types of medications, we oftentimes think that they're harmless. They're sold over the counter. You can take them when you have an ache or pain. How bad could they be? And you know, for the most part, when you take them every once in a while, that's pretty true. If you take them around the clock, so every four to six hours, for months on end, then you can start seeing problems. These medications have been associated with irritation of the esophagus and the stomach. They're associated with kidney problems and long-term use has been associated with heart problems. So these are not medications to be taken lightly and just taken forever. And I don't tell you this so that you can be scared of them. As I said before, these are useful medications. You just need to be aware that they're not appropriate medications to be taking long term. Now, what was the other anti-inflammatory we talked about? Prednisone. Now, a lot of people have heard a lot of bad things about prednisone. Everyone comes into my clinic not wanting prednisone, and I get it. Prednisone has a bad rap for a reason but there is no doubt it is a powerful anti-inflammatory medication. You know, back in the 50s and 60s, prednisone was seen as a miracle drug. This medication enabled patients who were suffering with intense infl inflammation to cut it down in both rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and a lot of other inflammatory and autoimmune conditions. Now, very quickly, we discovered it wasn't the miracle we thought it was, and it comes with a heavy price tag. Diabetes, weight gain and water retention, osteoporosis, hypertension, elevated blood pressure, heart disease, acne, did I miss any? Insomnia, psychosis. I mean, the list goes on and on. Again, not every single person is going to have every side effect. But those corticosteroids, man, they pack a punch. And if you take them long term, there are definitely some side effects that can come. Oh, risk of infection. That's one of the biggest ones. So as you can see, taking any corticosteroid long term is just not a reasonable long term solution for rheumatoid arthritis. Again, I don't bring this up to scare you. These medications serve a role and in some cases are necessary. I just want you to understand them. The other reason that these medications are not a good long-term solution for rheumatoid arthritis is they are very effective at lowering your inflammation today, but they are not as good at preventing the damage that happens tomorrow. Now this is a concept that I brought up in some of the other videos I've done about rheumatoid arthritis and I keep bringing it up because it's super important to understand. Your rheumatologist is thinking about your pain and suffering today, of course, but they're also thinking about your long-term health. And we know that rheumatoid arthritis patients, if left un- or under-treated, 
can develop irreversible joint damage that can lead to disability. And that's what we're trying to prevent. Not only that, but to allow smoldering inflammation within the body does a number on our heart, our brain, and our blood vessels. And we know that rheumatoid arthritis patients have a higher risk of having heart attacks and strokes similar to someone with diabetes. And the best way we have at controlling that is by controlling the disease as early as possible. And medicines like ibuprofen and naproxen and even prednisone are very effective at bringing down your inflammation, but they are just not as effective at preventing that long-term damage. So what is? Well, then we get into our second category of medications. So we had those anti-inflammatories, and now we have these anti-RA or disease-modifying medications. Now, these disease-modifying medications, or you might hear your doctor refer to them as DMARDs, that's D-M-A-R-D-S, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. These class of medications, um, thankfully, have been shown to prevent that long-term damage. Not only the damage that can happen to the joints, but the damage that can happen to the other organs within our body. So what are these medications? Well, we have subgroups within these disease modifying. We have the synthetic DMARs. These are the older medicines. These are mostly pills. And then we have the biologics. So let's start with the synthetic DMARs because honestly, when you're in your rheumatologist appointment, you're going to be given a synthetic DMARD first before you're given the fancy biologics. So what are these synthetic DMARs? So let's see. There's methotrexate, sulfasalicine, leflunamide, hydroxychloroquine, and let's see the one. Azathioprine. Not used as often, but sometimes it can be effective. So those are the main synthetic DMARs that your doctor is kind of going through in their head when they are evaluating which one's going to be good for you. Now, far and away, the most commonly prescribed first DMARD especially here in the States, is going to be methotrexate. If you're in Europe or South America, oftentimes they will rely on sulfasalicine first instead of methotrexate, but here in the States, it's really methotrexate. Methotrexate is our tried and true rheumatoid arthritis medication. I would say 99% of RA patients walk out of their first or second appointment with a prescription for methotrexate. Now, methotrexate can be given either in pills or injections, whereas all the other ones are mainly pills. And of course, they're all different in their mechanism of action. They have different strengths. They're taken differently. Some are taken once a week. Some are taken twice a day. Some are taken three times a day. It really just depends on the medicine. And the specifics of each medicine is really kind of beyond what I wanted to get into in this video because I just wanted to give a general view. So let's talk through a typical first or second visit when you're when you have a new diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis you've been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis your doctor has done all the appropriate testing and it's clear this is what you have you've been taking ibuprofen perhaps on your own and yet you still have a lot of pain and inflammation so your doctor says it's time for us to start some disease modifying medications so you walk out of that appointment with the prescription for methotrexate, folic acid, high dose naproxen, omeprazole, possibly some prednisone, oh, and some hydroxychloroquine. Whenever you are not used to having to take that many medications, it can be overwhelming for sure. But let's break it down because as overwhelming it is, as it is, there is a reason for every one of those medicines. So obviously we talked about methotrexate being disease modifying. Well, we know in order to prevent some of the more common side effects that can happen with methotrexate, taking a daily folic acid really helps. So those two medications are always given together. Now, let's say someone was taking over-the-counter ibuprofen and still having pain. Your doctor will most likely give you a prescription strength NSAID, a prescription strength anti-inflammatory. And these medicines are very powerful and they really do a good job of cutting down the inflammation. However, they also are notorious 
for causing heartburn, stomach pain, acid reflux. So in order to prevent that, your doctor will give you an acid reducing medication, such as omeprazole or similar type medicines. So that's why those two go together. Now, depending on the level of inflammation you have in your blood work and on your physical exam, like in your joints, your doctor might also decide that you need a little extra anti-inflammatory help, and that's where the prednisone comes in. And then finally, you have that hydroxychloroquine. Now, I know hydroxychloroquine got a lot of attention last year for reasons I'm not going to get into, but in the world of rheumatology, it's actually a medicine that we've been using for years, if decades. It is commonly used in all of our autoimmune conditions. It is classically an antibiotic that was found to have a very specific action within the immune system that modulates the immune response and helps balance an overreactive autoimmune response that the immune system might be having. And not only is it effective at controlling autoimmune disease, but study after study has shown that it's very effective at preventing those long-term cardiac, so heart, stroke, heart attack, those complications later on. So pretty much every autoimmune patient is given hydroxychloroquine. And so it is not uncommon to also be given that medication as well. Now, you can see how there's a lot to talk about with all these medicines because they're all new to you. They all have the potential of different side effects. So it's important that you ask the questions of why am I given this and what can I expect from this with each prescription that you're given. So that's just a very general overview of what you may be given on your first or second visit once you're given rheumatoid arthritis. And as overwhelming as I know it is, there is a reason for all those medications. Okay, so now let's jump forward three months. You've been taking your medicines and you do feel better, but perhaps you're not feeling great yet. So it's time to go back to your doctor and they check your labs and they do a physical exam and they agree that you are better, but you're still just not there yet. So first of all, what are some of the signs that you're not there yet? One is your blood work. You might still have some elevated inflammation in your blood work. Two, you still have pain. Your joints are still swollen. You're still waking up stiff in the morning. And three, something I would like you to be aware of, is how much of the pain anti-inflammatory medications are you needing to take in a day? Are you still taking one or two pills a day? Or have you been able to back off and you only need it a couple times a week? Those are signs that your doctor can really benefit from knowing to try to decipher how well you're actually doing. Many times patients will come in feeling great, their numbers are great, but you talk to them and you find out they're still taking their anti-inflammatory medication three times a day. And like I said, that's not a medicine we wanna be taking that often long term. Just something to consider as you are also trying to keep track of how you're doing, keeping track of how much of those anti-inflammatory medications you need is an important marker. All right, so you're in there and you're doing better, but you still need a lot of, of the anti-inflammatory and your labs are still elevated and you still got pain. So what's next? Well, I like to think of this as we're coming to a fork in the road. I think we're here at that fork in the road right now. This video has gone on long enough. I'm going to shut it off here and we're going to get to what happens after that fork in the road in the next video. Thank you so much for sticking with me for this long. Um, we're going to get into biologics and triple therapy and all the other things that happen once you're beyond methotrexate. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you know when that next video drops. If you've liked this video, please share it. Share it with every and anyone you know with rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, any autoimmune condition because the although the medications will be different, the general strategy is somewhat similar. So I really think anyone with any autoimmune condition could benefit from understanding the way we approach this. 
As always, we talk about everything rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness. And so we do that because it's all connected. Um, thanks and have a great day.